it's rare that I get this excited about doing a season recap or a season overview. And that's exactly what I'm doing today with Cheers season one. So a little bit of backstory so you know where my own personal views are coming from, but I'm really doing this video to hear what you think. This video may contain some spoilers, so it's more so for those who have seen the episodes and want to recap or those who would love to gush about it and talk about it because I'm certainly happy to do that for as long as everybody else is. But yes, I watched Frasier before this. I watched the entirety of Frasier and then made the decision to watch Cheers. Frasier doesn't appear in Cheers until season three. So I was like, am I going to drag my heels through two seasons? No, it is obviously an amazing show in its own right. I wish I'd seen it sooner, but I'm also kind of glad that I watched Frasier first, but it may mean that some of my opinions, certainly later down the line, may be slightly different. But today I thought we'd just do a quick overview of the cast and characters. I'd love to know what you think of them and if your opinions differ to mine. And then we'll just kind of have a look over the episodes and I'll say what I think of the episodes and I hope that you'll be able to do the same. So, the cast and characters. First up we have Ted Danson who plays Sam Malone. Sam kind of carries the entire show from start to finish. He is our bartender, he's a recovered or I guess recovering alcoholic and he owns Cheers, he's a retired baseball player and we definitely get to learn a lot about Sam in season one, more on that soon. The first character we really meet is Diane, Diane Chambers, played by Shelley Long and Diane is college educated, uh, she's an academic but suddenly finds herself in need of working at Cheers and there's an interesting contrast between Sam and Diane which leads for some very interesting stories. One of my favourite characters is Carla, Carla Tortelli, played by the endlessly talented Rhea Perlman. I love how feisty and angry Carla is and maybe not so much in season one but as we progress we do get to see, because I have seen the whole show, we do get to see uh, her character develop but in season one she's fantastic. Then we have coach er Ernie Pantuso who used to be Sam's baseball coach, played by Nicholas Colasano. Colasanto, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, so he used to be Sam's coach. He's got some very interesting views and approaches to things, and he has some amazing one-liners. Uh, he is a, a brilliant, brilliant character. And then, penultimately, and one of my favourites, it's Norm uh, George Wendt, who plays Norm Peterson, who is a slightly overweight... Uh, kind of semi-employed beer holic who often is just propped up at the end of the bar and I love his attitude I love his outlook and I just never have a dull moment when Norm's on screen and then lastly we have John Ratzenberger's character Cliff Clavin who is usually the butt of most jokes he works for the United States Postal Service he's very proud of that and he doesn't always get along with Carla or I should say Carla doesn't always get along with him. He is often the one being laughed at, but he's a lovely character and a joy to watch on screen. So, we're gonna go through the episodes. There will be, I'm just gonna go over them very briefly, not in any great detail, but if I miss anything out that you'd like to discuss, please let me know. Uh, so episode one is called Give Me a Ring Sometime, directed by James Burroughs, written by Glenn Charles and Les Charles the powers behind Cheers and in this one it starts off with Diane and her fiance Sumner Sloan in Cheers they're getting ready to go on a lope to get married in Barbados and then Diane finds herself waiting a very long time and suddenly she's in need of a job at Cheers and that was a really good introduction it made it pretty obvious pretty quickly that a lot of the show was going to be about Diane and then we come into the next episode, which is called Sam's Women. And this one is all about the kind of women Sam dates who are usually young, dumb and blonde. Very generic, very stereotypical. And in the second episode, we learn all about Sam's personality and what he's like. And I think for those first two, it's, it's really good at setting up the characters. Similarly, episode three, we have the Tortelli Tort 
which is all about Carla. And she's quite aggressive in this one. It is a good look into Carla, but it does stereotype her personality a little bit. As the season progresses, we get to see a lot more sides of her. But I think that's probably true for all of the characters. Then we have Sam and Eleven. Sam, as an ex-baseball player, is being interviewed. Not my favourite episode, but still pretty decent. We also get our first look at con artist Harry the Hat. I never really took to that character, and it's not a character who I like to see coming back. So that never really moved me. Coach's Daughter is the next episode, and this is kind of Coach's first um, central episode. And we get to see a different side to him when his daughter is setting to get um, married to somebody who Coach disagrees with. And it's, it's, it's a little emotional in part, but it's obviously very funny like all of the other episodes. Then it's Any Friend of Diane's, in which... One of Diane's university friends comes along to the bar and obviously Sam has to stick his nose in because it's a pretty attractive woman. And hilarity ensues. Episode 7 is probably cited as one of the best episodes of Cheers. It's one that a lot of people love. And it's friends Roman's accountants and Norm, being an accountant, throws a toga-themed party for the office and he throws it in cheers and it's it's a very odd episode norm looks fantastic in a toga it's really good fun and one that i remember really thoroughly enjoying truth or consequences we get to see the first real rift between diane and carla and this is a rift that lasts a long time and sometimes it's intense sometimes it's really funny and i nearly said something that would spoil Something pretty major, um, so I'm glad I didn't say that. Endless Slumper is quite an interesting one. There's a bit of superstition there with a lucky bottle cap. And it's a, it's a pretty good episode, but there's also a little bit of emotion in it with Sam and what the bottle cap meant to him. I'm sure you'll know what I mean if you've seen the episode. The next one is one for the book, which I didn't I didn't really like. Um, it's not that it's a bad episode but we do get to see quite a lot of the snobbery behind Diane I love that about her character and often works really well when she's discussing things with Sam but it's not my favorite episode then next up we have episode 12 which is the spy who came in for a cold one and this how how do I how do I best describe this this mysterious man comes into cheers and he claims to be a spy and then he writes an expensive check and nobody believes him and it's a lovely little character study and also kind of makes you question what we can and can't believe from people. And what do you think about this particular character? What do you think of the outcome? I'd be really fascinated to know that. Episode 13 is now pitching Sam Malone. And again, we have another look at Sam. <laughs> this time he's in a beer commercial, which is ironic since he doesn't drink. But it's a good episode. I really enjoyed it. Not one of my favourites. Episode 14 is Let Me Count the Ways. And we learn that Diane's cat was called Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Which is an absolutely lovely name and I love that one. This is a really good look at Sam and Diane. By this stage things are progressing quite quickly. It's a lot of fun to watch. I think in hindsight it's quite weird to watch. But when you're watching it for the first time, it's it's pretty intense. Episode 15 is... Uh, what can I say? It's called Father Knows Last. Carla has her first on-screen pregnancy with her fifth child. And we soon start to learn a lot more about Carla's home life. And how many kids she has and how chaotic everything is. And I think for Carla, this is probably the first time where we get a proper look into her as a... It's a person and not just somebody who's always angry. I think that was really, really effective. The next one is The Boys in the Bar. This did not age well. This one basically revolves around being gay. And there are some men in the bar and Norm and Cliff are trying to guess who's gay and 
why they couldn't possibly be gay and there's a fear that the bar will turn into a gay bar. Yeah, that didn't age well at all. But Diane Diane um, kind of spearheads the whole thing by saying it's not a problem. Who cares if they're gay? It doesn't matter. You know, she kind of gives the right message across, but I still think that this would not air as a new episode today. Number 17 is Diane's perfect date and it's all about a blind date and Diane and Sam arrange blind dates for one another and they have very interesting different outcomes and I think this episode is actually really important for the development uh, of the later episodes and maybe even the later seasons. Number 18 is No No Contest. And Diane is suddenly in a barmaid contest and obviously she prefers to be academic. She wants to be known for being a powerful writer and a powerful woman. And these contests are all about looks, basically. And it's great to see her being kind of out of her comfort zone. And again, some of the opinions that she delivers are hilarious and wonderful and I love her. Number 19 is pick a con, any con. And I've never played gin rummy, but a lot of money is lost by coach in this card game. And then Sam has to try and get it back. And there's some interesting twists in this one. It's not often that a Cheers episode will have twists. But it does. And it works really well. And it was... I was over the moon with it when it finished. I was like, that was a a brilliant ending to that episode. Number 20 is someone single someone blue. Diane, it's a bit of an odd episode. Diane finds out that she has to marry within like 24 hours. Otherwise she's going to lose her money. Uh, Her mother will lose her money. And so will she get married? Will she not get married? What's going to be the outcome? It's not the most exciting episode, but it probably does have a lot of thought. It does make you think quite a lot. But yeah, it's definitely not one of my favourites. The last two episodes, 21 and 22, are a two-parter. Showdown part one and showdown part two. In the first one, Sam's perfect brother comes to visit. We never actually get to see him. And Cheers is very good at this. We never get to see Vera. We never get to see or Sam's brother. There are a lot of other, several other characters that pop up that we don't really get to see properly. And we also have that in Frasier with Maris. It's it's brilliant fun. But yeah, so Sam is feeling not adequate when his brother's there. And there's a good little moral in that, of course. And in the second part, I'm, I'm assuming you've seen it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be this far into this video. Obviously, in the second part, Sam and Diane finally put aside their differences and go at it like rabbits I mean actually they don't they just kiss in the episode but you know what's about to happen I think it's an ending we all expected I don't know really if it was overwhelming or underwhelming it was just whelming it just happened and I thought yeah I saw that coming but I still felt a little rush of excitement when it happened so as far as the series ending goes it was good did it need to be a two-parter I don't think so I think I mean, I don't really consider them to be a two-parter, except for the titles, um, speaking kind of how I view it. But season one is brilliant, and it does take a little bit of getting into it, to get used to it, to get used to the characters. There's a lot going on at any one time. The first episode itself is actually quite slow, because it's, the bar is quite empty. But then it picks up the pace, we get introduced to these new characters, and soon you fall in love and there's no way out. And it's just fantastic. I would love to know who your favourite Cheers characters are. What your favourite Cheers episodes are. And whether or not you watched Frasier. And how Frasier compares. And if you saw Frasier before or after. But any thoughts on Cheers that you have. I'd love to hear them. <laughs>